Two Labour peers have been suspended by the party after being caught in a sting operation by a newspaper offering to pay them cash for questions. Lord Cunningham, a former Labour minister, and Lord Mackenzie of Framwellgate, once a senior police officer, both deny wrongdoing, but they were caught on camera, apparently offering to become paid advocates for a fictitious company. A third peer, Lord Laird, has resigned the whip of the Ulster Unionist Party after also being caught up in the allegations. Cordelia Lynch has much more. Former Police Chief Lord Mackenzie of Framwellgate, former Cabinet Minister Lord Cunningham, influential men now suspended at the centre of a story that has led Ulster Unionist Lord Laird to resign from his party. Three peers accused of offering to lobby for a fake solar power company in return for cash. Here, Lord Laird explains to an undercover reporter how he can get colleagues to ask questions. Some of the guys, for instance, the Lords, and I know we've got to put down questions for them. You get to put down questions? Yeah, and then I put down questions for them. And, uh, what do we sort of, uh... and what's the reason for getting them to do it and not doing it yourself? Well, uh, because if I get them, if I'm employed by you good people, put down a question which is related to uh... you guys making money, I'd have to put a, I can do it, but I have to put a, and I decided these are, I've got an interest. Oh, I see. It's, it's not, and that draws right. a lot of attention well, and... <laughs> It's, it's fine and you get the same answer, but it's better not to do it that way, it's better to do it some other guy. Lord Laird has relinquished the party whip, but he denies he's done anything wrong. He claims he even took along a journalist as a witness because he was so suspicious. Lord Mackenzie says he was simply interested in the firm, not in breaking the rules. Here he explains how he can arrange parties for paying clients. How do I get round? How would you get round that? Oh, I don't know. What do you do? You say to a colleague who has got nothing to do with it, would you host a... <laughs> right. That's common sense, isn't it? All three men deny flouting Parliament's code of conduct, which states that Lords aren't meant to profit from their role. But the claims were damaging enough for some. Uh, I'm angry as a citizen of the United Kingdom that this seems to be happening in Parliament and I'm angry as a politician that the good name of the endeavour of politics trying to find shared solutions to shared problems is once again being smeared by what appears to be conduct that literally cannot be defended. Forgetting about it, David Cameron predicted because the potentially toxic impact of lobbying no more than three ignore. years ago. It's the next big scandal waiting to happen. But today we still don't have the statutory register of lobbyists he promised. We think it's necessary, but there's some work still to do to define the scope of it. Actually, the only effect it would have had on what's going on at the moment is that it would have made it easier uh, for those people who were duped by a bogus uh, lobbying company to discover that no such company existed. This case has once again thrown the sometimes murky world of lobbying into the spotlight. Many argue it is a necessary part of any democracy, but there are renewed calls for greater transparency to reveal more about the culture that drives it. Cordelia Lynch, Channel 4 News.